All right, Desiree, it's one o'clock and we can go ahead and get started. Do you want to go ahead and um, we're going to do the municipality uh, audit committee meeting the, for the agenda today and it's September 24th at 1 to 2 p.m. And Desiree, can you go ahead and call roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Miss Allard. Here. Miss LaFrance. Mr. Rivera. Present. Mr. Falsey. Mr. Slivka. And Miss Morrison. I believe Ms. LaFrance, you've joined us. Yes, I'm here. Thanks, Desiree. Hi. So I believe we're missing Mr. Balsey and Mr. Slivka, but everybody else is here. OK, well, uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. If they're going to hop on that. Fine. I'm sure we're not going to miss too much anyways. So we're going to go over the internal audit report for 2020-08 annual municipal um, card review purchasing department so mr falsey um miss does miss morrison have anything that she wants to input since bill and alex aren't on yet or um let me see assembly member rivera do you want to do you recommend we wait until those two are on or do you want to go forward what do you recommend thank you madam chair for the question um i, I would say if Mr. Chadwick um, if and Mr. Haddon are both here, so if one or two of them want to do a quick overview of the audit, uh, I think that suffices and then we can go into questions because I know I have questions myself and perhaps other folks do. I think that's a great idea. Mike, you want to go ahead or uh, do you want to go ahead and start off Mr. Chadwick and then we'll go to Ron and see what input he has? Sure, I can do that. This is um, our annual P card audit. And in this audit, we found that most employees adhered to the municipal policies and procedures regarding the use of the P cards. However, our review did reveal some instances of some questionable or prohibited purchases. Some of those questionable purchases included cat uh, cable and satellite television subscriptions, seat covers, neoprene seat covers, um, microwave ovens, refrigerators, food catering. Um, some of the prohibited purchases included food for a holiday party, water, Christmas trees and office areas, retirement badges, retirement plaques. Um, in finding two on page three, we found that the transactions were sometimes split to circumvent the dollar, the single, uh, the cardholder single transaction limit. Um, we found 14 purchases totaling about $62,000 that were split into 28 separate purchases. And then our last finding, finding three, we found that um, purchase descriptions were not always adequate. Uh, some P card descriptions uh, contain inadequate, um, or some P card transactions contain inadequate descriptions of the purchases. Uh, for example, uh, an inadequate description could have been like uh, Mike did for Sam. Well, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> or it just had a document date or just an invoice number. Um, and some of the P card description transactions had wrong descriptions. For example, one purchase was described as coffee makers for the break room. But when we looked at it, it was actually a purchase for digital cameras. So that was uh, that's a summary of the report there. The municipality has about 50,000 transactions in 2019, uh, totaling um, a little over $19 million. So the transactions that we did find represent just a very small portion of the overall pool of transactions. Generally speaking, the municipality does a good job in overseeing the P card program and that this program has proven to be a very effective means of, of purchasing a small dollar goods. I'm open to any questions or Ron if you wanted to add anything. 
Yeah, the, the only thing I'd like to add is this was a reflection of the uh, calendar year 2019. And in 2020, almost all of our P cards had been reissued. And when Beverly reissues those cards, she does some <clears throat> refresher training to the individuals that get the new cards. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm hoping that in 2020, uh, next year when Mike does this audit, uh, that, <clears throat> that we won't have these type of comments uh, because of the refresher training uh, that Beverly did when she, when she reissued all of the cards. Thank you, Ron. Um, so I do have a couple of questions. I'll just lead into it, and then I'm just going to let everybody want to chime in. And Desiree, if you can just follow to see who's in queue, and then we'll just go down the queue. So one of them is the rental and food, food catering for staff team building retreat. Do we have a cost, and what happened in that situation? Yes, we do have a cost. If you could hold on just one second, I could pull that up. Okay. That the um, food catering was for three hundred and five dollars, and the facility rental was four hundred and twenty dollars. Wow. Okay, so they obviously know at this point that if they want to have something like that, they might want to do a slush fund or donations. <laughs> yeah, it, it has to have if they want to do something like that. We we talked with the department, and and. Uh, we pointed it out to them and I, and I don't think we'll see this again. And then I know and I'm just going to make this point clear. I did already speak to the APD in regards to the four thousand dollars worth of coffee brewers. And the way it was explained to me is that they went into a new building. And like I've discussed before, I'm not sure what happened to the old coffee filter or the old coffee pots, but they put a new coffee pot and I believe it was Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chaddock, but it, they had uh, $600 per coffee pot and they added it to each floor. Um, their justification on that was that they didn't want to put coffee pots that maybe 75 to 100 people were going to be using daily, that they felt that if it was cheaper, that they would break and that therefore would have to be replaced. So I just, when I spoke to Chief um, and reiterated and he agreed, we're not going to see a $4,000 purchase um, for new coffee pots like that as far as yearly or, or things like that, because these are meant to last for a long duration of time. And then um, that's really, I have a lot of other concerns, but I want everybody else to be able to um, just say what they have to say. And I think we'll go ahead and lead into, Desiree, who, can we let Chair Rivera, Co-Chair Rivera go first and then let everybody else follow? Of course, I see Mr. Rivera and then Ms. LaFrance. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I um, sent an email with a few questions uh, to both Mr. Haddon and Mr. Chadwick and uh, included Mr. Slivka as well, and I got some really good answers. So uh, I, I want to get some of those into the record um, and then have one follow up. So first was around um, the PNPs, because I think that's um, Aside from the training, I think making sure that our policies and procedures are very clear is important. So I was really glad to hear that one of the policies around this was updated last year. Um, the other policy though, uh, 2423, it appears that that hasn't been updated for a while, I think since 2010. Um, it, could someone speak to that specific policy and um, when it might be reviewed for an update? Uh, this is Ron. I will jump in on on that one. I know 2024-23 has not been formally reviewed, uh, but I know it has been informally reviewed uh, <clears throat> at least by uh, two of the previous uh, uh, municipal managers. Uh, Mr. Vakalis had reviewed it when he was there. Uh, and then uh, I also believe uh, <clears throat> Mr. Falsey has also ref <clears throat> referenced it a number of times. Uh, so we can go through the process of a formal review uh, to at least uh, document that it has been a formal review. And I believe that's a, 
Uh, Molly, I think that's within your shop for the formal review, if I remember right. Actually, the this is through the chair. This is uh, Alex Lifka. Uh, formal review of the PNPs rolls through um, OMB and then through the mayor's office. That, thank you for those responses. Um, then the um, uh, other thing that I, uh, so two more things. So first is um, these audits are done annually. What is your perception that the audits help to mitigate some of these issues? Because I think, um, I don't think Ms. Kennedy is with us today, but at the assembly uh, meeting, Ms. Kennedy had uh, brought up that some of these appear to maybe be recurring issues. So how do these annual audits play into helping mitigate some of those factors? Ms. Hollard, I can respond to that in part and maybe Ron could add add to that. Is that, is that okay? Um, yeah, go please. Yeah. Every year we do this audit and because it's required, required our, our office is required to do it every year. And I feel that because we're doing it every year, municipal employees know that this will be happening. And because they know the, that it will be happening, they are more careful with their purchases. For example, it's not uncommon for me to get phone calls asking if one purchase is, if a purchase is acceptable, if it's prohibited, and a lot of times I'll refer them to the PMP or sometimes I'll refer them to Ron. Uh, so I'm frequently contacted about different purchases and what my thoughts are on those purchases. And sometimes I'll consult with Ron about those purchases or with uh, the P card administrator, Beverly Culberson. So I think just by us doing the audit every year is a control that helps, uh, helps ensure that that purchases are appropriate. Ron, did you want to add anything to that? No, I, I would just add to it that because of the number of cards that we have out there and the number of people retiring, we get a number of uh, <clears throat> new card holders every year. And unfortunately, some of them aren't as thorough in review of their purchases as we would like them to be. Uh, but by and large, the majority of the purchases are small dollar, and I believe they're more of a perception issue than actually someone trying to commit fraud or intentionally uh, <clears throat> violate the rules. Got it. And then the last question I had, um, I wanted to get a better understanding of the process, uh, the disciplinary process here. So it looks like there's a suspension that generally lasts two weeks. And then after that, uh, depending on if there's recurring um, prohibited or questionable purchases, then it moves to termination. So I just wanted to get a better sense of how that works, what judgment calls you use, and then um, also, does uh, someone ever get reissued a card in a future year if they've been terminated uh, in the past? Uh, I'll jump in on a re response to that. This is Ron. Uh, Beverly Culverson, our P-Card administrator, is, I will say, very good at looking at that and highlighting to me uh, those instances where we've got people that need cards suspended. And we have no problem in suspending cards. And as uh, Mr. Rivera said, we suspend them uh, initially for two weeks. That generally gets people's attention because that's impacting how the department is uh, <clears throat> pursuing their mission. Uh, and then uh, Beverly monitors that and she will tell me, Ron, we've got this person with a recurring problem. Uh, let's terminate the card. And then we will talk with the department uh, and the individual and determine whether the card should be terminated or not. It's really based on a case by case basis. Uh, and we want to make sure that the individual understands that uh, use of the card is a privilege. It's not a right. And so that we are uh, pretty, Beverly is pretty diligent on uh, looking at those cards. 
Mr. Rivera, do you have any more questions for them? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up on that last question I asked, and maybe I'll try to rephrase it. Uh, it might have been confusing. So um, let's say someone gets their P card terminated. In, in a future year, could they ever get that card reinstated? Uh, short answer to your question is yes, but we're going to look very hard at that about uh, is there no one else in the department that we uh, can issue the card to? Uh, but in general, if we've terminated a card, we're not going to reissue that card unless there's extenuating circumstances at the department. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Ms. LaFrance, did you have a question? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Actually, I, I do have a few questions, and um, I wanted to start by saying I've seen these kinds of issues and misuses of P cards in organizations where I've worked as well. And to Mr. Rivera's point about clear policies, I think that's definitely key. And I understand the administration recognizes that as well. Clear policies, clear communication about the requirements, and then ongoing review, and then also looking at root causes. I know that the splitting purchases is oftentimes something that people do with the intent of trying to meet a deliverable. Um, and so I know that we've had conversations about that in the past to make sure that the other appropriate procurement methods, you know, are, are functioning in ways that support the business. So a few questions. Um, first, are these, when, when someone makes a purchase, I'm assuming then um, electronically it goes to the supervisor. And assuming it goes to the supervisor, um, my first question is, why would these be approved by the supervisor, these kinds of purchases that are not permissible within the policy? That's an excellent question, and I'm not really sure how to answer that other than some supervisors are probably not as knowledgeable of the program as they should be. And we do try and reach out to supervisors as well as the cardholder. OK, thank you, Mr. Haddon. I mean, my suggestion as someone who's a supervisor is um, to hold the supervisor accountable. And I don't know if, for example, the Muni has a code of conduct that has to be signed each year. That's something in places where I've worked, we do electronically. And it references like P card use. And it's a, it's a reminder that, you know, if you don't follow the policy, then up to and including termination could result. So a suggestion I would have would be to really put pressure on the supervisors because um, I don't, I, I think that's a place where, you know, that kind of scrutiny can occur and also um, they can be stopped. And then another question I have is, um, can supervisors or directors pull reports that summarize each month the kinds of purchases their teams are making and that include a level of detail that would you know help to identify any problems in the interim between official audits that's my second question this is ron again on the on um, the question about reports yes they can in fact on the purchasing website we have a link to where anyone uh, can go in and pull a report on the p cards is that a monthly report? It or can be an ad hoc report. Oh, it can be a monthly uh -huh. report as required. OK, so uh, you know, just a suggestion that directors might require uh, or consider having um, you know, the area supervisors review those reports. And, um, and I don't know if specifics are required. You know, I've worked in places where we have to have the five W's, who, what, where, why when is something being purchased and you know requiring that level of detail um, when people submit their expense reports or whatever you know it gives you cause to to pause and reflect as well and that may be something that's already being done 
and just putting out there. Um, my last question for any of these, and you may have already covered it. Did any employees end up uh, paying back the, like the cost for buying stuff that shouldn't have been purchased? The, uh, <clears throat> this is Ron again. As far as the employees uh, paying back, uh, we have not pursued that. Uh, Mr. Okay. Prince, you have a follow up? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and apologies, I didn't stop after each question. So, you know, just um, a quick comment on that piece as far as paying it back goes. I think that that can be a compelling part of the policy, especially if, you know, a supervisor doesn't approve an expense report. So some something else to consider. Thank you, Mr. Howden. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Appreciate the opportunity to ask questions. Of course. And I'm going to go ahead and follow up a little bit on the accountability. Ms. LaFrance is absolutely correct. As the supervisors um, and leaders, we should be held completely accountable for what our subordinates do and do not do. So I have a couple of questions too, just to follow up a little bit where she was, because she did ask about the classes and I wanna know, are there supervisor level classes so they can look out for, that's one question. And then I would also like to know, is it in policy that they pay back that funds? Those are taxpayer funds. And if it's a second time that they've done it, one, I don't recommend they get their card back at all. But two, I do believe they should have to repay that um, as a lesson learned too. Do you, can you answer those two questions for me, either Ron or, or Mike, or please? As far as, uh, this is Ron, as far as the training goes, uh, yes, we do train the supervisors uh, because they have to know how to review uh, within payment net. And uh, <clears throat> I just want to make the comment that uh, thank you for your comments on holding supervisors responsible and particularly for uh, your emphasis on employees paying back uh, disallowed purchases. We will definitely pursue that in the future, and we will update our uh, P-card manual to uh, require that supervisors run the reports and that they be responsible, uh, because I totally agree with uh, the comments from uh, Ms. LaFrance and uh, Ms. Allard about supervisors and holding people uh, accountable. And thank you for those comments. This will help us in our uh, P card program. Uh, Mike, any additional comments? I have no additional comments. Um, although I did want to note that these prohibited purchases were not personal purchases. They were purchases, prohibited purchases made for a department. Thank you for the clarification, Mike. That does make a little bit of a difference, um, except for, yeah, it does. But we still have to hold people accountable. So sounds like we all agree on that part, which is important. Is there anybody else that would like to say something in regards to this particular audit? All right. So I don't know. I don't see that we have any other business unless somebody wants to bring something up. Just... You want to? I'm looking at my thing. I don't see anybody in queue. But if you want to just chime in, you're more than welcome to. Madam All Chair. right. So then, oh yes, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a little bit to unmute. Um, well, first off, thank you, Madam Chair, for having this meeting, and I wanted to also thank members of the administration for this conversation and. Um, you know, the ongoing due diligence with the P cards. And I know it was noted in in the audit report about issues of, of public perception and, and public trust. And I very much appreciate that um, we all share that perspective. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome, uh, Ms. LaFrance. This, oh, looks like there's someone in queue. Is that you? Sure, Alex. Yep, sorry. sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Alex Go. Lipka through the chair. Um, I did want to reinforce uh, what Mr. Hayden had said that um, that we are going to uh, do this, uh, take this 
input very seriously. The, the current um, policy does indicate that employees who make disallowed or disapproved expenditures must immediately reimburse uh, the MOA by cash, check, or payroll deduction. So uh, it is already in the policy, and uh, I, I think what, what we're going to do between purchasing and internal audit um, is, is make sure that to the extent that, uh, that we are identifying transactions that shouldn't have happened, that they are, in fact, there is a reimbursement process that is being followed. So thank you for that. Thank you. And Mr. Rivera, did you have a comment or a question? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, two quick things. First is uh, much like we have gotten updates, and from my uh, perspective, I think a written update would be OK. Um, but I'd like Mr. Chadwick, if at some point down the line, if he could provide us an update on some of the recommendations that we have put forward today, as well as, um, uh, you know, it'd be great to do maybe sort of a mid-year, how are we doing kind of thing. Um, so if we could do that at some point, uh, that'd be great. And then the second thing is, uh, wanted to get a sense of um, timeline for us to begin thinking about the 2021 um, audits schedule. I know we still have a few months left in the year, but things are going to start getting hectic come next month. And before you know it, it's going to be December. Um, so do we have a sense of when we're going to start that discussion on the 2021 audit schedule? I can respond to that. This is Mike. Normally the 2021 audit schedule, we send out a, a request for audits at the beginning of November. And we request that those be submitted to us by about the second week of December. We can certainly start that process earlier if you would like us to. Um, that, that's, that's no problem. Our goal is to have the 2021 audit plan completed uh, in January for approval in, by the end of January. But we can accelerate that timeline if, if that's what the committee would like us to do. Mr. Rivera, what uh, is your Madam, Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. So from my perspective, um, I think that's a, a, a workable timeline. Uh, you know, if we can try to get started right after we finish up the budget, uh, which it sounds like that's roughly about what happens, um, then, um, then that works uh, from my perspective. OK, well, that's it reasonable request. Do you think we can make that happen, Mike, just to keep moving forward as quick as possible? And Sure. Um, we'll plan on sending out our, our request for audit suggestions. Maybe we'll accelerate that just a little bit right at the end of October. We'll send that out. And um, then we can we can provide follow up on this P card audit too in three or four months and see how see where we stand. OK, and I also wanted to say thank you to Alex um, in regards to saying we're going to we need that we're going to start following through with the guidelines where we do get the reimbursement. This is muni dollars that are actually taxpayer dollars. And so we do want to show that complete transparency. So, Alex, thank you for bringing that up, that we are going to start following through with being able to um, get reimbursement for those card purchases that shouldn't have been made. And does anybody else have any other comments about this right now? All right, it looks like there's someone in queue. You want to go ahead and speak up? It looks like, oh, no, it's Alex. Okay, thanks, Alex. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're at old business. Is there anything, anybody else has anything to say about old business that we've discussed? All right, so then we're just going to go on to audience participation. Desiree, do we have anybody in queue that would like to speak up that's in the audience? We've got one phone caller. Hello? OK. Hi, Eugene. Go ahead. I, OK, I'll start my timer. Uh, this is Eugene Carl Hedman. Live in the Master Valley, follow the public process when the public process is done appropriately. 
decision made by the governing body is more like the public interest. First, I would like to thank those responsible for having the necessary documents for this meeting for the public to see on, on the site. Thank you very much. And uh, it was very interesting, but a couple of things to note. When you have this audit report on a particular item, you note uh, uh, policy and procedures and you cite them. It would be good to have an attachment with that particular document with the, these policy and procedures uh, document and also note who, who approved those policy procedures, family or whoever, and when they were approved. So that, that audit that you got there is referencing a uh, particular policy procedure and so forth and being and dealing with the issue but the fact is the background of this making document vital and i could not help but notice that there were a lot of questions in reference that if that if that documents were there then those questions wouldn't necessarily be needed because the document would be there to familiarize the assembly members and the public what are those policies and procedures and then um i guess that's it basically and uh and thank you for following through from the last audit committee and putting up the documents that you've got there. Um, and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Jean. I appreciate it. Desiree, is there anybody else in queue for audience participation? I do not see anybody else. All right. And then I'm just going to go forward with and ask anybody if you have, even if it's back referencing the P card, I'm okay with that. Is this anybody has any last minute conversations that they would like to have? Because we have everybody on the phone. Mr. Rivera, do you have any further input that you would like to say? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no, at, at this point, uh, I am uh, good to go. It was a good discussion on the P card and looking forward to the further review from Mr. Chadwick in a few months. Thank you. Thank you. A special thanks to Alex and to Ron and to Mike, because yesterday I had um, conversation with them a little bit, how the P cards work and the system um, as a new assembly member, that was really informational and I really do appreciate it. So if everybody's okay, I would like to adjourn so that we can get on to our next meetings. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds great, move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, and have a good afternoon.